Welcome to another episode of our real estate podcast, Hustle and Motivate with Cyrus and Danny. Brought to you exclusively by the Pacific West Association of Realtors. All right, all right. We're excited to be back here today with another episode. Um, I'm I'm stoked for our guest today. Um, he is the number one real estate coach in the world. Consistently sells a hundred plus homes a year as a solo agent. Right, mm-hmm. Ricky Caruth, my man. man. Boom. How you doing? Doing well, dude. Absolutely. Good to see you. Nice Welcome. To see you. Nice to see you too. So happy to have you. This is yeah. exciting. We are stoked. And I'm and, and and because we only have a short amount of time, I want to get into the weeds really quickly here. I want to ask you if you are a brand new agent or an agent revamping their career, what's the advice you're gonna give them to get started to start their production as fast as possible? Yeah, so it's a, it's a really a lot deeper than that, right? Because the thing is, is everybody has different stories, goals, um, strengths and weaknesses, right? So every agent that I coach, I have to really dig into what they've been doing, right? What their daily schedule is, what's been working, what's not been working, what, where are their struggles? What are their goals, right? Everybody has that, that story is different for every agent, right? And yes, so it's kind of like, when I go out and get a listing, a, a lot of people want the cookie cutter. How do you convert, right? And the thing is, is I don't know until I know why that seller is trying to sell, right? What's going on behind the scenes in their life that's causing them to make that decision to sell that house, right? Did their, did, is, their, is their daughter graduating from college in four months and they yep. want to downgrade, right? Did they lose a job? Did they get a new job? Right? Do they just want to upgrade? Well, what is going on behind the scenes? It's not just the transaction. Right. So until I can realize why someone's trying to do something, then I can't help them. Yeah. And I have no idea what the next step in the process is. Right. Because a lot of agents are like, I talked to a seller and they said they want to sell in three months. And I was like, okay, I'll call you back in three months. And I'm like, you (laughs) go. I'm like, they're like, okay, cool. I'll I'll talk to you then. And I'm like, wait a minute. You got to say, what's got you thinking about selling in three months? Yeah. And find out what the backstory is so that now we can actually create a timeline and a custom game plan around what their needs are, right? Same thing with agents. I have to dig into what they're doing, why they're doing it, what's been working, what their strengths and weaknesses are, because there's so many different ways to succeed and everything works. It's just a matter of, like, I think a great coach is going to dig into somebody and unlock their true potential behind what avenue works best for them. I think a lot of coaches are like, this is the path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But no, that might not be the path for this agent. Like, so like I built my business, just cold calling property owners, right. Doing a weekly email, um, and doing some direct mail and stuff that, that was my entire, that, that was my Avenue, right. That was my lane, but like that lane's not going to work for everyone. Yeah. So I got to dig in because I'm a firm believer that all the avenues work, right. It just depends on the agent. So it, it's a very complicated process. And like you, you said, you even made it more complicated when you're like, okay, what if I'm a new agent? Right. Or what if I'm a, trying to an agent trying to revamp my business? You know, just to look at new agents is a completely like yep. like there's so much to unpack behind just being a new agent. Right. And then if you're trying to revamp your business, that means that we have a whole storyline of being in the industry already. And we have data there behind what's been working, what's not been working. Right. What the goals are, how we can scale the business. And so you got to understand that, like for me, whether I'm dealing with a seller trying to list a property or an agent trying to help them, you know, reach their goals, it's all going to come down to me for a, a customized game plan around that seller, around that agent specifically, because every single one of them have a different goal, motivation, work ethic, um, everything. Right? Yeah. And, and until I can break all that down, I can't tell you. The only thing I'm a firm believer in as far as like what the path is, is that you have to be a great communicator. In terms of making people, in terms of making people feel comfortable with you, because the common denominator for all closings is a conversation, right? Regardless of where you get your leads from, like it's like it's absurd, like it's scary to me the amount of agents who spend thousands of dollars on leads 
to, to yeah. not to cold call. Like they spend thousands of dollars not to cold call just to turn it right around and call those leads. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it, it's yeah. absurd. Right. But when I was doing prep, knowing that you were coming here, I actually um, popped on Spotify, was listening to some of your different podcasts. And one of the things that I really loved that you said was like, if you really want to take your business to the next level, I was like, you need to make five new friends, you know? And so people spend all of this money on all of these crazy leads when you can go out there. And if you can have 10 conversations with people to create five new friends, create five new relationships, people that you are going to consistently be interacting with and that you're going to develop that deeper bond with, that's what's going to help you scale your business. Yeah. And another thing that you had said, which I really appreciated was, Everyone is different. Everyone has their own niche. I market in a much different way that Cyrus markets, and we have ways that we run our businesses that are going to be great for both of us. But you had said, spend 15, 20 minutes, think about all of the different ways that you can lead Jen, pick mm -hmm. the top ones that you relate best to, because people yeah. are going to automatically be drawn to authenticity. They're going to know if you're BSing. Am I allowed yeah. to say BS? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. They're going to know that. if you're BSing and not being <laughs> true to yourself, you know? And so, you know. No, <clears throat> exactly. Like, and, and to, to that point, it, it, like, it doesn't matter. How, I don't care how you get there yeah. in terms of having the conversations to create the relationships. Yeah. You can go out and buy the leads. You can go out and uh, there's so, there's, there's a nice, you know, lists of different ways you could go out there and have these conversations, but you can't get around the sweat equity mm -hmm. of, you can't buy your way into this business. A lot of people like there's definitely industries that you can acquire market share, right? This isn't one of them. There's there, you cannot get around the sweat equity part of this, but so many people try to get around the sweat equity part of actually filtering through the population one at a time conversation like having conversations with as many people in the market as possible to filter through the population to find that 20 to 30% of people who love you enough to do business with you. Mm -hmm. People don't want to put that work in. They're trying to get find a workaround yeah. to that sweat equity part. And you can't, there's no way around that. That's, that, that's the passage that you have to go through. And yeah, I think and that as a coach, what I really admire is that you are like, what works for you? will work. You just got to figure out what works for you. And there's other coaches in the industry that are like, this is the way, this mm -hmm. is the way that you got to do it. You right. have to do a, or you have to do Z. And you're right. like, look, I don't care. You know, if what's you're so great about it? you know, what's so great about that. And why I feel like coaches may, may veer that direction mm -hmm. and, and the difference in me and, and them. And this is not a shot at paid coaches, by the way. Yeah. Right. I'm done taking shots at paid coaches, but, but <laughs> the thing is, is I'm free. And so, and so I have zero like back end ulterior motive to tell you this works or this doesn't work. Or You're not do selling a new product every week. Anything, yeah. You just right? want people to kick butt in real estate. I, I, I'm just, I'm just telling you what it is. Yep. Right. And so then you, I can stand behind it. Right. That, that, you know. I can say everything works. Yeah. I'm not trying to get you to do this so that you're paying me over here. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yep. And I so know that, that one. And, 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 and then, so then for me, it's more, it's more of a like, okay, do I make money from coaching? Yes. Right. I, I did this to build a massive brand that I'm in the middle of, like I'm in the beginning stages of, yep. even though I'm five years in and I have a massive brand, it's nothing. Right. I have a nice foundation to start on at this point. But at the end of the day, do I make money? Yes, because I'm able to take that and parlay into different JVs sectors and, and businesses and, yeah. and different things like that, right? Sponsorship deals and all kinds of other things. And that was the goal, right? But the thing is, the business models of the future is, is where everyone wins, Yep. right? And so that, that was my thing is I saw the, the, the direction of business, right? And you see this with yeah. a lot of companies now more so than ever that they've created a win-win for everyone involved, mm -hmm. not just the corporation, not just the coach, not just the team leader, not just one side is doing all the winning, yeah. right? And the other side basically is just giving, giving, giving and getting nothing in return, right? I saw that was the way it was going. And like the, one of the big inspirations was Gary, you yeah. know, Gary V. Mm -hmm. um, because that, like I really found him in the middle of me trying to figure this whole thing out. Like, how do I do this? How do I make an impact big enough where we actually do knock a dent in the failure rate in yeah. the industry? Like, how do we get to that level of influence? You know what I mean? 
So, well, and I think what's really cool is like you've, you know, going back to what you were saying is you can't go around that uh, uh, sweat equity. Going back to, I think the core of it is, is like it's people, right? Like you're, 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 you're breaking it down to understanding that people have value over, over the monetary uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, gain, the short term monetary gain, which will create long term monetary value right so like like you can't exactly what you were saying is you cannot buy market share well that's because you can't buy people because people is your market share right yeah well you know like i've seen people come uh, agents come yeah. from out of town right come into my market like back when the market was really i mean the market's been on fire very similar to like the oh three oh four oh five totally different kind of market like but similar in terms of how on fire it's been yeah. Um, there were people that came into my market cause I'm in a, I'm in a second home beach community, right? Okay. Where like, it's, it's like everybody in my state, like they envy us agents on the beach because you know what I mean? Cause the yeah. price points are so good. There's mm-hmm. a lot of turnover. It's second home investment. And so there were a lot of out of town agents that came in and I saw what was happening that these people, these agents were, for, were from other areas and they were coming in and they're like pouring money into advertisement. Like you would see the billboards of, of agents you've never heard of before, right? Mm-hmm. And I would see advertisements all over, like commercials and postcards, and like they were spending, I know, an ungodful amount of money just to try to build that name really fast. Yeah. But you, but those agents aren't there anymore. Like they, they were gone as soon as they came because they they burn up all that cash trying to acquire market share in an industry that you can't buy market share because yeah. even when you're spending all that money. You need to have, it needs to be filtered down. See, the funnels in real estate aren't a funnel to a listing appointment, uh, a showing. It's a, it needs to be a funnel, and the end of the funnel needs to re- create a conversation mm-hmm. yep. with that lead. That, that's, the, that's the sale of the funnel is to get us on the phone or in person where we're talking to the yeah. prospect. And then the conversion is making that person feel comfortable enough with us to do business with us now or later, yeah. like creating the business friendship relationship, Let, right? For now or later, that's the conversion. Let's, right? let's, let's dive into that now or later. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Right? When I'm talking to a prospect, I, I could care less exactly if they want to buy or sell now. I don't care about that. Yeah. That's not even on my, that is like 5% on my radar. Right. I want to know, but I want to know from a place of, can I help you with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out what it is they want to do so that I can help them do it. Exactly. Right. It's not a, you know, you don't want to buy now. Well, what if this? Yeah. Right. A lot of the objection handlers that a lot of the, you know, coaches and trainers, you know, are are focused on how to turn the situation around from a no to a yes. And for me, the objection is my prospect telling me what they want to do. Yep. Right. And I'm and I'm trying to listen and go with what they're what they want to do as opposed to trying to go against what they want to do to try to turn them around. I want to go. That's why I've sold so much property, because I allow all my clients to basically do the deal on their terms. Yeah. Even when it comes down to pricing, I'm like, here's the comps. Here's the data. Here's where we're going to price it at. Here's the real number based on data. Yeah. Right. Oh, but I, I still want this. Great. This is what's going to happen at that price. You, you sure you want to do this? Great. Let's go. Yep. I don't care. Like right now we're in a, we're in the the phase of the market where it's seller denial that the market has, has leveled out. Right. And so all Mm -hmm. of our sellers are still thinking in that, you know, even 60 day ago market where you can price things 10% higher and you're going to sell it for even more yeah. than that. Right. That was the strategy for like the last 18 months that it's worked beautifully. Right. Yeah. But that strategy does not work anymore, but we're so early in this next phase of the market, they're kind of in denial. So they're still pricing them 10, 000, yeah. 10%, 15, even 20% higher. Um, and we're taking those listings because we know that if they actually do want to sell, then reality is going to hit them as those properties sit on the market with no showings and they're going to reduce. That's exactly what we're seeing. Like we're taking overpriced listings because we know we're in that phase of the market where we have to, or they're not going to list or they're going to list with another agent. But once we get them on paper, then we can work them from there. And now we're getting huge reductions. We're getting stuff under contract, but we're selling more property now. Like our our sales have doubled since interest rates. Like we've been praying. I've been praying for interest rates to come up. Right. So that so that we could be on a more even playing field. Right. Because 
like we can take listings, right? Like more people are willing to list and demand is still incredibly high. When agents that are kind of new to the game, <laughs> they're thinking like this, this is over. Like our lives are over. Yeah, yeah, deal, yeah. Right? No, I was so excited. So I um, acquired some new clients and they sent me, I set them up on a search. They sent me a list of all of the properties that they want to see. There were 55 55 showings that they're like, we would like to see all of these houses. And I'm like, I remember three months ago that I would go through that same exact process and there would be four and they were all at the top of the budget. And I'm like, you guys, this isn't going to work out. Right. And so it was like, I was so happy last night sitting down and realizing like, this is going to be like, this is a good thing. Yeah. You know, everyone is freaking oh, out, absolutely. but honestly, this is going to lead us into so much more of a healthy market where it's win-win for everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, and this is exactly what I keep trying to tell people is like at the end of the day, like where the market's going for the agents that are going to stick it out and crush it or, and, and, and keep pushing through where we're at right now, it's only going to benefit us, right? It's only going to benefit. Well, our, like I was saying at the, yeah. at the talk yesterday, and I've, I've made videos about this, but like I have a track track record of calling out what, how things are going to play yeah. out. The like we're at all time low in terms of transactions per agent because yep. we have so many agents that got in during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We're in a perfect storm where dues coming up, continuing to add, right? After two years of the pandemic and people are like, I haven't sold anything yet. There's no need in paying more money or doing continuing to add in the market yeah. where now we're going to have less transactions. So it's a perfect storm of losing more agents in the industry than we've ever lost before because we're at an all time high. People thought it was going to be easy. Right. And so what, what we're going to have at the end of the year, even though we're going to have less transactions, is more transactions per agent for the ones who don't get out of the business, yes, sir. which really doesn't change anything at all. Right. That number is really predicated on a very inflated number of agents who aren't doing anything. Whereas the viable agents, the ones, the ones with the mm -hmm. pulse that are actually selling, which I estimate to be around 400,000 agents out of the three million we have in the country, um, right? That number is not going to change. So like the number of transactions per viable agent is, is X. Yeah. And as these, this group of agents who aren't viable leave that transaction per viable agent is not going to change. Yeah. But overall, when you do the calculations, it's going to be more transactions per I just see huge opportunity, even for the new agents and everything. If they can just wrap their head around the fact that this is unlimited over here, mm -hmm. right? Like it, like, it, and like, it's all predicated on how much you can handle behind putting into the work to talk to the most people you can talk to. If they can just wrap their head around that one thing and then put systems in place on the back end in terms of how are we prospecting, how are we following up, how are we marketing and branding on the back end, that that's it. It's so yep. simple, right? So that that's kind of what I'm trying to preach, man, is that, you know. You any, got the recipe for success. Anyone can do this, yeah. right? And I'm not saying this is the way to do it. Yeah. I'm saying here's the foundational, here's the, here's the principles behind how to build this. Yeah. Ye yesterday, yesterday it, you had a huge event here in LA. I mean, it was freaking phenomenal. Every speaker that came up was amazing. And, and when you went up, I, uh, something that hit me really, really deeply. And we had talked about it afterwards was you asked, um, something along the lines of, uh, if you, are here and before you found my coaching program or whatever you were on your way out of the industry you were ready to quit but you're still here can you please stand up and there were tons of people You're that gonna stood up. You're going to make me up. cry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was, That's so awesome. It no, was no, amazing. You, no, you know what's so funny is like I almost cried on yeah. stage and I'm sure probably people like saw I bet that was such like, like an affirming moment for I you. Even and for like, everybody there, that's like, this is the real thing. It no, gave me the chills. For yeah. sure. there, there was a lot of um, things like before I came up that um, like Alexa was like, how many, how many people here like has like Zero to Diamond and Ricky like affected your business? Like in a, and like almost everyone raised their hand. It, it's crazy. Right. But when I did that, the core mission statement of Zero to Diamond is to reduce the failure rate in the real yep. estate industry one agent at a time. That's the mission statement. It has been from day one. And I was like, let me take a risk right here. Um, you know, if, if you were if you were about to you know have to quit the business, right, nothing was working. You were just uh, you were like almost there to like walking away from the business. And, and like somehow you found my content or coaching or whatever, and it kept you in the game. And now you're thriving right? Stand up. Yeah. You know, like I was like, let me take a risk. Cause like, I didn't know if yeah. you yeah, yeah, stand exactly. up or not. You know what I mean? Two people. And, and it, it was literally, <laughs> it was literally like 20 people or something, That's you know so what awesome. I mean? Um, and so many people like the stories, like after I, like before I go on stage and after 
um, of people that come up to me and say, you know, like this is life changing stuff. And like your, your, all of your stuff is like completely changed my life and stuff is like, it, it's it, so like, cool. I'm almost like fixing a breakdown right now. Like it, it, it's the whole reason why I, I do this. Right. Yeah. Cause I was going to quit several times. Like people don't know this, but you know, I lost a hundred thousand a year for two years in the beginning of coaching. Cause I was just pouring money into trying to build it. Um, and I was taking 80% of my time spending on this that I'm losing money on and only yeah. 20% on this million dollar real estate business. And I'm like, why this is out of whack. Yeah. And like, I was like, I, maybe I shouldn't be doing that. I even told my dad, I was like, I don't know that I can do this anymore. It's just not sustainable and everything. But then I would get messages every day from agents saying, this is working for me. This is changing my business. I'm getting listings. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And every message I got, it was like, it kept me going. That's like crazy. That was the whole reason why I continued was from the support of, of the agents who were finding success in it. But no, you're, you're it, right, dude. It, like seeing that those people stand up yesterday, like I, I was, I, I said it on stage. I was like, I'm like getting yeah, emotional getting here for a second. Up, yeah. like, Isn't it crazy that, that the people that you saved their careers saved your career, really, if yeah. you think about it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because that support is the reason you're still coaching is the reason where you're at your number one coach in the world. I mean, and, and, and the coolest thing is again, f number one coach, but also a free coach, which is unreal. Like, like your content uh, is, is the best content in the real estate industry hands down. And it's crazy because you were going to quit. Yeah. Yeah. That's I think, insane. I think there's a lot of stories like that, right? Yep. Um, of like in different industries and different, you know, genres that people were going to quit. And then they went on to be like superstars. Um, you know, and, and like, I'm so far from where I want to be. And I'm so humbled that like anybody even watches my content and says that it helped them and stuff. Like I'm still like that Alabama teenager <laughs> that was roofing houses with my dad type thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like <clears throat> that's like where I am mentally is like, I'm still a nobody, right? I'm trying yeah. to, I'm still trying to be somebody in terms of being that influential person that people can really relate to and use to like catapult their entire life. You know, it was like I was saying, it's not a help you sell more property situation. It's how to do more in less time to where you, you have that, that lifestyle that you want in terms of happiness, right. Yeah. And being able to spend time with your family type stuff. Like, um, we did the survey, seven out of 10 agents that completed the program, get more listings, close more deals. 87% say they have better time management, right? It tells me that people that go through zero to diamond, like produce more in less time. Yeah. Right. And have time to spend with their family while producing more. But 98.8% .8 say they enjoy being a real estate agent more. Right. And that's the one that really hit home that's with me. Amazing. Yeah. Right. Is that it's, it's not just this, this is how you sell real estate. Right. It's like, this is how you live. Right. This is a better quality of life. Like, cause we for got you, into this for your family, for everything, yeah. for everything. Cause we got in this business for freedom. Right. Yep. But, but, but we, but, but a lot of agents don't feel that <laughs> yeah. way. Right. Cause you're jumping three feet in the air every yeah. time your phone rings, you're work, you're working until 10 o'clock at night, you're stressed out, you, yeah. you know? And like, for me, I went through all that. Right. But now I'm not. Yeah. Right. And I figured all that out a long time ago about like controlling your business, not letting your business control you. But that, that's a big like core, like goal of zero to diamond is not and, like, reducing the failure rate is one thing, but reducing it through spreading the zero to diamond principles, which create a quality of life. Yeah. The, the, the reason we got into real estate, you know what yeah. I mean? We lose sight of the reason we got into real estate because of how we're just trying to succeed and we get caught up in being number one and competing with all the other agents and stuff like that. And, Honestly, it's not even about any of that. You know what I mean? Like people, people don't understand, like be, just being a real estate agent, like in this country, you're in the top, like zero, 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 one percent of the human race. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. To, like, like other That's countries, huge. other countries, like they, they don't have MLS. Yeah. Right. And said so like, they, they go out and get like sellers go out and hire eight different agents. It's, crazy. it's open mandates. And the first agent that brings the buyer wins. The rest of them lose. Yeah. Over here, we get exclusive listings and we, we like spend like five minutes putting it on MLS and getting professional pictures. And then we basically, we may sell it ourselves. Like we're working hard, right? Mm -hmm. But in terms of like the efficiency behind having the entire population of agents in our market, basically fighting to sell that listing for us yep. 
and whoever sells it, it doesn't matter to us. We we're gonna make half the money. It's crazy. It's it like it's <laughs> like nuts it when you think about it. It's like insane. Yeah. Right. And like people are complaining. Um, you know that they're they're making like six figure, right? And they're yeah. complaining they're not making seven figure and stuff. Um, it's it's nuts, man. It's it's insane. Like how incredibly grateful we need to be as an industry, especially in this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the infrastructure we have in place, um, the uh, the amount of like gratitude we need to have to even just be here, even if you haven't sold anything, just to have the opportunity to like be an agent. You're 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 like you have no idea how where you rank in the entire human race. One hundred percent. I love that so much because it really it just comes down to mindset because there are you can you can be of the mindset of there how many realtors are there in the yeah. entire world or in the you know California or the United States or whatever. But when you take it from that perspective and you're like you know what this is pretty awesome like look at what a movement that we are a part of. We need to be more proud to be who we are. You yeah. know, so it was a really great message. And you know to what's so that. is so mu much more incredible um, is the fact that, like, like us as an industry and us as agents, we just like the bottom line is like, like technology, like things have tried to take us out. Yeah. <laughs> like there's Always, plenty, yeah. there's plenty of companies <laughs> that would love to like give do us the every food. single yeah. real estate <laughs> deal and like just cut us out completely, right? Yeah. But oh, it's yeah. so funny that every single company that's tried to do that has done nothing but enhance our situation. Yeah. Right? That's so, so true. So, so, like, the company that, like, sells us leads, right? Yeah. Um, like, people, like, people still to this day, like, I'm thanking God for that company. Yeah. Because the thing is, is I used to have to, like, people used to have to say, Ricky, I'm looking for this house. I'm like, okay, let me find a list of all these houses. Let me send you this list of houses. Let you look at all them. Let me know which ones you like and then see if they're still available. Set up the showings, all that. Now, they just call and say, here's a list of everything I want to see. Yeah. It completely saved hours yeah. of, of the time I used to spend with buyers. It literally condensed it all down to where now I'm more efficient yeah. because of the, yeah, the company. Yeah, the consumer finds the property they before you. Yeah. And, a, and a lot of agents are still like, they think this company is the devil <laughs> and stuff, right? Yeah. And I'm like, thank God. Yeah. I don't yeah, exactly. have to like look up properties for people anymore. Like if, if you look at every single thing that has tried to take us out, and, and honestly, I yeah. honestly believe that they tried to take us out. Yeah. It's not it's like now I think those companies are planted out like, oh, we were never trying to take you out. Right. Yeah. We're, we were never trying to take you out, guys, because they failed at doing it. Yeah. But they were trying, in my yeah. opinion. And there's been several of them. Right. But they've all failed. And done, and every time that they try to do that, it's just nothing but help us. It saves us time somewhere. AI, like yeah. all the companies that try to do it have enhanced and like it, they actually create a scenario where we sell more property because they tried that yeah. and they introduce something in the market that helps us succeed more. And I just, I just, I have a really strong belief that we're not going to get taken out. I just have a strong, strong belief that people need people mm -hmm. to, it's not like. So when things happen and things change, you just need to be adaptable. Continue having those conversations with those people, with those clients, with those agents, maintaining relationships. It all yeah, comes back and, to the basics. And I think it's, it, I think it's, it's something that you're, you're saying is perspective, right? Like, like the, the, the interesting thing about, I think that being surrounded by some of the most successful real estate agents, some of the most successful real estate professionals in the country is, is really, it comes down to perspective. It's, you're either going to choose to say, oh, woe is me, XYZ company is here and they're going to ruin our careers. Or you're going to sit there and say, hey, this is a great opportunity for me. Yeah. And you're going to capitalize. That's on what it. I see. Like yep. the discount brokerages that come up. I'm like, yeah. great. How can I leverage this to my advantage? Well, yeah. Here's how you leverage it. You let your clients go use them and see how bad their service is. Yeah. <laughs> let them come running right back to you. Right. That's what's happened. Yeah. That's what's happened. So I've had clients go use the discount brokers and they come running back. Yeah. I'm like, good. Go try it out. Go try to save some money. Because at the end of the day, like when someone uses another agent, right, or, or they buy for sale by owner. Like, there's agents that get mad at clients that go use somebody besides them. Yeah. And I'm like, you need to congratulate them because they did what they thought was best for them, and mm -hmm. that's what you should have wanted. Yeah. 
And you should be saying, awesome, great job. You saved some money or you did this or that. Let me know if I can help you with anything else yeah. moving forward. We're never going to run out of houses to sell. It's what's going to happen okay. is, is that that client that bought that from another agent or bought it for sale by owner, when they go to sell it, there's a good chance if you handled it correctly and didn't make them feel bad yeah. for not using you, they're going to come back and, and allow you to sell it. So I have so many clients that 100%. came back to me that went and used other agents that came back to me, right? Because when, when they did it, I'm like, you know, I didn't call and say, why'd you do that? Or whatever. I'm calling and saying, good job. Right. And I'm congratulating them on that. It's the same thing with the discount brokers. When I, I've had clients that are like, I'm going to go use this. I'm going to, I'm going to save like 1%. I'm like, go, yeah, go do it. You know what I mean? Tell me what, tell me what you think. I'd love some feedback on that company and stuff yeah. like that. You know, it's just, and then I'm going to spend the time that I would have spent on that deal if they would have let me list it and go list five more properties. Yep. Mm-hmm. See, it's the future time that you get back. That's what people don't, like, don't value into the equation is the time that you would have spent on that deal, you can now take, because that's our most yeah. precious commodity, right? 100%. So, like, you get that back future time. Like, they're literally giving you a gift of future time yeah, yeah. that you can spend you can go to go, more. like, procure five more deals in the same amount of time that you would have spent on this listing. Yes, sir. Instead of doing that, a lot of agents are just sulking about the deal that got away. They're using the future time to sulk instead of that future time to be I productive, love that. right? Yeah. That's huge. And, and, and also the, the coolest thing is we're talking about, you know, you're, you're, when these people go and use somebody else or whatever, you're also realizing that this business is based on relationship. That's what it comes down to at the end of the day, right? It's relationships that you're, you're literally understanding. So guess what? When they go use someone else, you're saying, Con- congratulations. Hey, if you need anything, let me know. That's why they're coming back to you when it doesn't work out. Well, the thing is, is that they went to do something. And since they chose that, yes. then they felt like that was what was best for them. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you, that should be your goal is to yeah. help them do what they think is best for them. So when they do that, they need to be, you need to feel like you won. Yes. That they did Love what that. they felt was best for them. If not, then that just tells everyone in the world that you're just doing this for money. Yeah. And then, and if what they do isn't best for you, then, then this really wasn't a re- the relationship that you made it out to be in the beginning. Exactly. Right. But there is a Love fine that. line, right. Between the fact that, yeah, they're going to use you, but there was the, the, the part of the equation where the relationship didn't matter to them. It was about, they're going to save money. Yeah. Right. So there was that part of the, of the process where the relationship didn't matter, right, to the client. Yeah, they're, yeah. If they're going to get a better deal somewhere else, then money talks. Yep. And that's why, like, moving forward in the industry, um, and then and this, is a, this is a big reason why I'm super flexible with my commission when I'm negotiating, because a lot of coaches and trainers are like, 6%, you're worth 6%. If you take less than 6%, no, all this stuff. I'm like, you're going to turn down a relationship over a half a percent? Yeah. Whereas that relationship is going to turn into 10 to 20 deals to you over the life of your career mm-hmm. through, through, through repeat business referrals and referrals of referrals. And when you look at the referrals of the referrals who are going to be repeat business referrals and referrals of referrals, every relationship could be worth 100 deals to you over the life of your 30-year yeah. career, right? And you're going to turn down 100 deals, 20 deals, whatever, over a half a percent or even 1%. It doesn't make sense to me, yeah. right, to, to turn down a deal over a quarter of a percent, like you could have negotiated down a tenth of a percent. Like I got, I tell you, I get, I get a lot of listings at like five point nine, four point nine. It's like I don't yeah. have. It doesn't have to be four, four point five, five, yeah. five point five. Like I can get it for four point eight, yeah. right? Give the buyer agent two and a half and still walk away happy as can be. Yeah, yeah. And I think that like it's crazy because I'm still getting five and six, and that's what I was getting twenty years ago when I got in the business, right? And like, and like people are so like there's so much downward pressure on, on commission rates and like different cities are different, right? With the tech cities yeah. and stuff, mm-hmm. it's different. But even at a 4%, which is kind of becoming a norm, like four or 5% in some markets, when you're getting 2%, two and two, super lucrative, right? Yeah. The new agents coming into the business, they get 2%. They're happy as can be. Mm-hmm. Yep. The ones that used to get three on deals, they're sad. It's like, wait a minute. Like, like two is still incredibly lucrative. And I'm not saying, I'm not an advocate on let's lower our commissions. I'm an advocate on keeping it at five or six, right? Yeah. But 
I'm not naive to the fact that we're moving into the future where there's going to be downward pressure because of how easy you're seeing this yeah. thing. Like you're, you're getting two and a half to 3% on the buyer's side, but you're not having to look up properties anymore because yeah, yeah, of yeah. technology. Right. And all this technology is helping us be more efficient and sell more properties in less time. Sure. There may be a little downward pressure, but you're selling more properties. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? Like you're doing more volume. 100%. You know what I mean? So, um, I think flexibility on commissions to, and, and, but being a good negotiator, like I'm flexible, but I'm still, I'm still know how to play the game when it comes yeah. to negotiating. You know your I still get yeah. a lot. I still get higher commissions, right? I'm really good at, at showing the value and getting a, getting a, you know, like, yeah. I don't just come down, you know what I mean? Like I'm playing it out. I'm filling them out to yeah, see, yeah. to see like, and I, I do it in increments to see where exactly I can land up. Cause I know, I love, the, see, I know at the end of the day, I'll cut it all the dude, way if I have yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. To like when they, when, they tell, when they tell me like, I, I would like to this, I'm thinking I will do that in a heartbeat, yeah. but they don't know that. Let me see if I can squeeze another half a percent or something to make it work for the buyer side. Cause if I represent both sides, I'll take a lot less. Well, I love that 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 I you know, you just dropped a, a golden nugget for me is that four point nine, right? Like <laughs> no, like let's be honest here. Like yeah. that's yeah. huge. Because right. because the reality is is like no one talks about that. Right. No one talks that you could go down a, a, a tenth of a percent. Four point nine five. They just want to see yeah, a four in front of it. See, exactly. Right? It's like advertising three ninety nine nine, yep. right? <laughs> they just want to see a three. <laughs> exactly. It's, so. it's, it's, it's a, it's a mindset shift. And that's, that's, and you huge. talk about like one tenth of a percent on a deal. It's like Take nothing, but, okay. but, but, <laughs> but, but to the consumer, it's huge. It, it's like, Oh, I got in the fours with him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's huge. That's a cool one. And then, and then, um, you, you, you mentioned you 20 years, how, how long have you been in the industry? 20 years. Yeah. 20 I got years. in when I was 20 years old okay. and, uh, it was 2002. I want to put this, I want to, I want to lay it in perspective here, uh, I, because I don't think we've ever talked about it and I don't know this. Um, but you've been in the industry for 20 years. How long did it take you to hit a hundred deals a year? Let's see. The first deal, year I hit a hundred was 2014. So that was, uh, 12 years. 12 years yeah, to 12 hit 100 years, years. 12 years. or 100 deals a year. Right. That, that 15 hours a day, bro, because I didn't have Red yes. X. I didn't have like the, the technology of today mm -hmm. where I could click a button and get thousands of property owners information, click another button and automatically call all of them at three at a time. Yeah. You know, how, <laughs> dude, do you, do you understand like, like where I would be, like how quickly I would have got to hundred deals with the technology of today? Yep. Right. But like I'm in the gray area where I grew up where when we got when I got in real estate, there was no social media. Right. Crazy. There, there was no um, like Facebook, like started in like 2004 or five or something. Right. YouTube was like 2000, you know, four or five, something like that. Like there was nothing in 2002 when I got in. And so like I'm old school mm -hmm. enough to understand the work ethic behind and like growing up roofing houses to to actually going out there and doing the sweat equity part of the business, mm -hmm. right? But I'm still young enough to understand how to use technology. Yeah. Whereas you see like the brand that I built on social in the coaching world. And so like, that's the most dangerous agent who understands the old school and, and combines it with new school. Like if you can find that yeah. agent, cause most agents are one or the other. They're either, they're either only doing old school or they're only doing new school. Right. But they're not mixing the two and understanding the real core the core end goal of the funnel yep. is a conversation, right? And that's that's the that's the thing too. Is like uh, uh, someone someone asked me the other day is that same concept, and I'm like, it, they were like, well, how do you know you're so young? And I'm like, I read, like mm -hmm. I listen yeah. to every podcast. You know, you learn from experiences in life. But that's guess the thing what? Too. They don't need to be your own experience. That's the thing too. There was no podcast, right? Yes. So like in today's world, you There's literally no can learn from people that have been in the business thirty years. Right. All the way to the like the high end luxury guys that are selling, you know, 20, 30 million dollar homes like they're sharing information. Yep. So you have that. That's a huge advantage right there because you're literally getting mentored by some of the most incredible agents in yeah. the world. Right. Right there on your phone. Access to information. Right. Is and and then the technology behind being able to communicate with more people quicker is like absurd. Right. Yeah. But like getting from zero to 100 deals. Um, can be done so much quicker nowadays, but still is a long process, right? Because it's interesting because like if you take an agent that's a, that's a killer, right? In another market, Juan can probably attest to this, right? Cause he just moved from um, New York to, to Florida, right? Yeah. I don't know if he's, he's not trying to sell, but like it, like I've seen like experience that are good agents go to a different market 
takes them six months to get to their first sale in that new market. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take new agents, right, 90% don't make it. So the 10% who do on average, it takes them six months to get to their first deal. Mm -hmm. So like I'm going based on real data that I see that it takes a new agent that's going to make it the yeah. top 10% average wise, six months to get to their first deal experienced agent killer in one market, go to another market, takes them six months on average to yeah. get to their first deal. So you have to realize when you look at that, that it's not because you're a new agent that it, that it takes you six months to get to your first deal. Yeah. Right. It's the fact of the amount of relationships that you have to Cultivate. create. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and get your name out there and build the, the, the amount of sweat equity to build the, enough relationships to build momentum in the business. It's not because you're new. Yep. It's because it takes that long of really grinding it out to put the sweat equity in to, to build enough relationships to build that momentum. Right. It's, yeah. it's interesting to think about that dynamic. You know what I mean? Um, it's not about being new. It's yeah. the fact that it takes that long to cultivate to, enough relationships to build the momentum to start to gain traction. That's huge. Dude, Ricky, I wish we had like four hours yeah, to do this thing. Yeah, this is amazing. Because of what we're getting and the like, value. Ah. Yeah. And the value I, need to get to, I need to get to work. Can we wrap this up? I got to get to the office. <laughs> um, but I, I, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for coming on today. I want to. I want to also give you the opportunity to let people know where to find you, mm -hmm. um, um, how to how to contact you. I know that your mm -hmm. your thing is you will respond to every DM in your in your messages. So so I'll, I'll let you kind of take that from here. Yeah yeah yeah. And and like my IG is totally like blown up. Like it's broken yeah. right this second <laughs> from the event and everything. But I'm working through all those messages and I'll hit every single body back. But um, IG is the best way at Ricky Carruth. Like that's where, that's my hub really like mm -hmm. communication. Like I, like when you hit me there, you know, you're going to get something back. If you hit me on a different platform, it's a hit or miss. Like I may or may not. Yeah. IG is 100%. Can you spell I'm, it? I'm R-I-C-K-Y-C-A-R-R-U-T-H. It's just my name. Right. And then YouTube's all this stuff, but the free coaching, right? 60 day challenge is at zero to diamond.com. I'm going to do it. And it, it, yeah. the, the cool thing about zero to diamond.com is that we flipped the switch and create it. 50,000 agents have went through the program. And what's so cool is we flipped the switch in December and, and it, now it's a social media platform where like you go create a profile, you can DM all the other agents on there. That's amazing. You create groups. There's a, you know, you post on your profile, you, you dress up your profile and then the 60 days atta is attached to it. And we're creating an app so that it'll be an app on your phone where everything will be right there for you. But, um, yeah, we're just trying to continue to get better and better. I've got 22 certified Zero to Diamond coaches who are basically little Rickies yeah. that are coaching agents for little free. Ricky. I was so, going to say, isn't that a singer? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like, that's what you should call me on the roof, actually, yeah. little Ricky, because my dad. But we um, every quarter, right, we do an application. So the application will start this next month. Um, where you can put an application in to get free one-on-one -on -one coaching with one of our certified coaches. So, like, we're trying to take it to the next level Wait, every time. You said, you said, how much does it cost? It's nothing. Yeah. No, we're doing one-on-one -on -one coaching for free. Like, we offer full-service coaching. Um, they help you through the 60 days. Um, and then, of course, the 60 day are completely free, right? And then yep. I'm, I'm accessible through Instagram or whatever. Like, I, I spend so many hours, countless hours, with new agents who probably aren't going to succeed. Yeah. Right. Like all day, I'm just trying, I'm just pouring as much as I can into wasting as much time. The more time I waste on people, the more money I make. Right. And I've always yeah. felt that that was true in, in real estate and, and even more so in this industry. Right. Because now it's a global, it, we're on a global level now. Yeah. Right. Cause I've got agents in all countries like, and you know, like it's crazy to see the differences in the different markets and everything that I'm learning and everything. Yeah. But yeah, um, hit me up at, at any on, Instagram for sure is the main platform to follow me through my stories. That's where I post like where you can really follow me through the day, doing the deals, helping the agents, this, that, and the other. Yeah. So yeah, at man. Ricky Carruth it. and zero to diamond.com. That's it. Appreciate you, man. Thank you yeah, so man. much Come for coming out, in. Absolutely, bro. It was you. really, really Thank nice you. meeting you. Thank yeah. You. Thank you for tuning in for this week's episode. Make sure to give us a follow on Instagram at Cyrus Andre. At Danny Femmel and at PacWest Realtors. Keep hustling. And stay motivated. We want to remind everyone that these opinions are our own and may not reflect those of